Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the She's Making an Impact podcast. I am super pumped you're here. Today we're talking about seven things that all successful bloggers do. Before we talk about that though, I just wanna hear from you. How is your 2019 going so far? I would love for you to send me a DM on Instagram and just let me know, how are you doing with your goals? Are you on track or do you need some help? What kind of content would you like to hear from me on this podcast? Send me a message. I love, love, love hearing from you. All right, let's dive in to the good stuff. Welcome to the She's Making an Impact podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Ngom. I'm an entrepreneur, mom, adventure lover, and creator of Pin With Purpose, the Impact Blogging Academy, and Activate. I went from food stamps and negative $400 in my checking account to a multiple six-figure online business. This is your show to learn from me and other rockstar entrepreneurs how to monetize your passion and live out your purpose. If you're ready to increase your income while making a massive impact on the world, this is the show for you. I'm so pumped you're here. Let's get started. So number one thing all successful bloggers do is they niche down. Selecting a niche market, this is something that I see so many entrepreneurs get stuck on. So let's first talk about what a niche market even is. It's basically just the subset of the market on which a specific product is focused. So it's really important that you figure out your niche because you really cannot be all things to all people. They say that, they say, I say, we all say, (laughs) I don't know. The riches are in the niches. And it's really, really true. When I was at Tony Robbins Wealth Mastery event a few months ago, Keith Cunningham was one of the speakers. And he gave the example of two car companies, Volvo and GM. Volvo has really dominated the niche of car safety, while GM has tried to be all things to all people. Volvo is growing while GM is bankrupt. So Keith asked at the event, what real estate do you own in the consumer's mind? Meaning when they think of you and your brand, what comes to mind. So it's really, really important that you do select a niche market. So I want you to think about what's the main focus of your blog and can you narrow it down even more? So just an example, my first blog, fitwithrachel.com, fitwithrachel.com used to be just all things fitness and healthy living plus details about my life and travel. And it was a hot mess. But then I realized by looking at my Google Analytics, which if you don't have Google Analytics on your blog, make sure you install that today. I realized my best performing content was around the topics of eating keto, which is high fat, low carb and intermittent fasting. So I got rid of everything else. And basically my entire blog focus was keto and intermittent fasting. What happened after I did this? My traffic exploded. My email list grew. This blog, which I haven't touched in over a year, still gets around 50,000 page views per month. (laughs) And I still make sales from that blog all the time because I niched down. So I want you to think, and you can take some notes here if you want, be an A plus student. What do you want to be known for? What are your gifts? And how, did I, it sounded like I said gifts, gifts. <laughs> and how do you want to add massive value to your audience? I do have an entire blog post about like picking out your niche market and all that good stuff, I'll make sure to put that in the description for you. Number two thing that all successful bloggers do, they post consistently. It's not what we do every once in a while that matters. It's what we do consistently. So it's Monday morning. Every single Monday morning, I know I'm going to write a blog post. Your audience needs to be able to count on you to do what you said you're going to do. You can't show up when it's convenient or when you feel like it. If you need help in this area, make sure to read The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. The Compound Effect is one of the first personal development books that I read when I started my first business at 
age 23. And it really helped me set myself up with small, (laughs) seemingly insignificant actions that have led to the success that I have today. And I just remember when I was 23, reading 10 pages a day, like he suggested and thinking, will this really make a big difference? But I'm a good student. So I listened and I followed instructions. And looking back, Eight years later, I can say that it has absolutely made a massive impact on my life, and I'm so grateful for this book. Darren says, it's not the big things that add up in the end. It's the hundreds, thousands, or millions of little things that separate the ordinary from the extraordinary. And I know this can seem daunting at first, which is why I recommend batching your content so you don't necessarily have to write every single week. So example, we're going in February, we're going to be traveling to Israel for a few days and then to Senegal for two weeks. So I'm going to be traveling for most of the month and I don't want to be doing a ton of work while I'm there. So I'm spending January batching a bunch of content. I do have an entire blog post too about batching content that I'll make sure to link in the show notes as well. Number three thing that all successful bloggers do, they add massive value. All successful bloggers add massive value to their audience on a consistent basis. So I want you to think, why would someone want to work with you if all it is that you're doing is promoting your offers or your products or your services? Think of your business kind of like dating, okay? Stick with me here. You're not just going to ask someone to marry you on the first date, right? You got to kind of get to know them and build a relationship first. So I want you to think, are your posts just kind of skimming the surface? And are you going above and beyond to over deliver? So your content should be so freaking good that when someone reads it, they think, wow, how else can I learn from this person? I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to pop in here briefly to talk to you about my free Pinterest masterclass. So you know Pinterest is kind of my jam, right? I've used Pinterest to get over 20,000 leads into my business for free, 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 and increase my site traffic by over 34,000. So I want to teach you how to do this. So jump on my free Pinterest training. Just go to freepinterestclass.com and I'll teach you how you can double your leads and sales using this freaking awesome platform and automate the process at the same time. So go to freepinterestclass.com and I'll see you there. All right. Number four thing all successful bloggers do, they have a call to action. So after the first date and you want to go on another one, what do you do? You ask for it. Okay. And to to be totally transparent, I've been out of the dating world for like eight years, but that's kind of how it works, right? If you look at any successful bloggers, they all have a call to action where you can get on their email list. Okay. Stop. You're building an email list, right? You need an email list. What if your Facebook account gets shut down? you get put in Facebook jail. That happened to me many times. Or your Instagram account gets hacked. That actually happened to my mom a few weeks ago. She lost her Instagram account and it totally got hacked. I'm like, good thing you're not an influencer mom and this isn't like your source of income or anything like that. You don't own any social media platform, but you do own your email list. So all the goals that I'm helping my students with an activate set, like when we're doing our goal setting workshop and everything, it all has to do with them building their email list. And that's like the primary focus when I'm working with them. It's essential for your business. Okay. And you can see, if you read any of my blog posts, I have several call to actions where you can continue on with me and learn something more by subscribing to my email list. I don't say those exact words and you can get like a free PDF or sign up for a free class with me, right? And it's way more than just a little button at the bottom of my blog that says subscribe to my blog. Don't take any offense to this, but nobody wants to subscribe to your blog. So you need to offer something juicy and full of value to them in exchange for their email. And I do have, (laughs) I have lots of content that's going to help you. I'm going to put it in the show notes. Um, So I have a post on figuring out what kind of freebie you should offer because I mean, there are a bazillion different options. So you can pick one and run with it and I'll make sure to link that for you too. 
Number one, five thing all successful bloggers do is they ask their audience. And this is really important. If you see any successful blogger, any successful business person, they're asking their audience and they're listening. A really good book about this is Ask by Ryan Levesque. Levesque? Levesque. One of those two. Just Google Ask (laughs) by Ryan. I think it's Levesque. And you'll see it on Amazon. And this is really going to help you create content that your audience actually wants and offers that they're going to jump on. Please don't skip this step. This is literally the first thing that all my students within the Impact Blogging Academy do. When you ask your audience, you gain so much clarity and you're truly able to add so much massive value to your people. Of course, I have a blog post about this exact topic too, um, all about how to do market research. So I'll link that in the show notes. And this is something you could do even if you... I know, I hear some of you in your head, you're saying, but I don't have an audience yet. There's a way that you can do this. Trust me, I'll link um, all about market research in the show notes too. Number six thing all successful bloggers do, they are themselves. So let me ask you, are you trying to emulate a successful blogger in your industry or are you being yourself? And I've totally been there, okay? So I remember when I first started my network marketing company when I was 23, I had no freaking clue what I was doing. So I literally just followed the top leaders in my industry and I did what they did. Like, literally, I copy and paste in their posts. And here's the thing I want you to know. People will want to work with you because of you and who you are are. There aren't any new products out there pretty much. Like there's nothing new under the sun. The thing that you're offering is probably being offered by someone else. So why would they pick you? Because of who you are. Be authentic and be yourself. And yes, this means that you'll get haters you'll get people that unsubscribe and you actually want those things. What? When you're being a bit polarizing, that's when you're going to attract your true tribe of loyal followers who you absolutely adore working with. For real, the ladies that we have in this round of Activate, they're so incredible and so much fun to be able to coach them. So you want those people. And I was able to attract such rock stars by being myself and by speaking my mind and not being afraid of losing people for sharing my faith or being silly. So we actually had a VIP retreat um, for some of my IBA students uh, right in the new year. And it was so cool. We were all like during the entire retreat, wearing yoga pants, drinking wine and working and having fun too. And I was like, you are my people. Like this is perfect. Cause I've been to conferences where I felt kind of out of place because everyone was all dressed up. And I was like, I don't like dressing up. Can I just show up in yoga pants so I can be comfortable? And that's literally who I attracted. And they were all amazing, had so much fun. And I do too. Okay. Number seven thing all successful bloggers do is they have a funnel a sales funnel. So there's things that you might not see in someone's business that's contributing to their success. And it's kind of underneath the surface and it's a sales funnel. So I want you to imagine an actual funnel where at the top of the funnel, something's poured inside and it filters down to an actual destination. And so that's the exact same thing that's happening in sales. At the top of the funnel, there's lots of visitors that that might show up at your blog and enter your funnel, but not all may end up at the final destination, which is becoming a paid customer. So Ryan Dice, he's the co-founder of Digital Marketer. He describes the sales funnel as a multi-step, multi-modality process, that's fancy, that moves prospective browsers into buyers. So what I teach is to bring people into your funnel via Pinterest, knock their socks off with great, great content, From there, you can create a relevant freebie, which will get the prospective customer onto your email list, where you can then build a relationship with them and market your products and services. It sounds kind of confusing, but really, really, really it's not. You just need to know the ultimate step of what you want your reader to take. And so think, is it to buy a course, become a paying client? You want to start with the end in mind and then 
reverse engineer it. So think what freebie would attract them to you that is related to your course? And then what kind of email series can you create that's going to establish your authority, build a relationship and make your offer the next logical step? So does that make sense? Okay. So to recap, let's recap these seven things that all successful bloggers do. So first they niche down, they post consistently They add massive value. They have a call to action. They ask their audience. They are themselves and they have a funnel in place. So I want you to think about which of these things do you need to work on first? And if you want to be a successful blogger, I definitely, definitely suggest that you register for my free Pinterest masterclass so I can teach you how to get more leads to your blog on autopilot. So just go to freepinterestclass.com to register. I hope you found today's episode helpful. If you did, make sure to go to iTunes and leave a review. It's going to help us reach so many more people with the show. And it's just awesome for me to see that you're enjoying the content as well. So thank you in advance for leaving your review and I'll see you on the next episode. Please go to iTunes and give my mommy a five-star review. Thank you. Yes! <laughs> <laughs>